Let's talk about scatter plots. First of all, what is a scatter plot? A scatter plot is a collection of points that come from paired up data. So data that has an X and a Y value. So if we look at one of these scatter plots drawn here, this point right here has an X value of one and a Y value of two. So we could be given this information in a table maybe. So we'll have a whole bunch of X's. So we plot each of these pairs on a graph. So again, if X is one, Y is two, we have this point right here, or maybe X is 2.8, so just a little before three, and the output is two. Five, three looked to me about to be on the graph, and then something like 6.2, so here's six, 6.2, and like 2.9, not quite three was the output. So the data could be given to you in a table format like this, you know, and obviously it would go on and on and on, on. Um, or even as ordered pairs. So we would have one comma two in parentheses or 2.8 comma two and five comma three, et cetera. What we want to do with our study of correlation and regression is we want to look at these scatter plots and notice if we have any patterns um, or shapes that the data tends to approximate. So we can see in the picture on the left that these green dots here are trending toward sort of like a straight line. And so we could draw a line that approximates these data points the best. And we call this the regression line or the line of best fit or trend line. It has many names. We can see that these red data points here, they go in the opposite direction. So instead of having a positive slope, their trend is to have a negative slope. And again, that red line is the regression line or the line of best fit. And it tries to approximate the, the data points um, as best as it can while taking them all into consideration. Uh, one thing we might run into when doing this process is outliers. So let's say that this point uh, was on this red set of data here. It's pretty far away from the pattern that the other points are producing. And so we would call this guy an outlier. Now, most of the time we'd wanna take an outlier out of the data because if, if that outlier was in the data, our regression line would still try and hit it. And so it might alter the path of our regression line and it might look something like this. So this lower line would be without the outlier. This last scatter plot on the right here, the dots don't appear to estimate any sort of pattern. There's no trend here in the dots. We could still draw the line of best fit, but because the dots don't estimate a pattern, they're really not telling us anything about what the data uh, is suggesting. So we would actually say here that since we don't have a trend in the data, that there really isn't a correlation between the X and Y data values. Moving back to the data plot in the, in the center here, we did have the trend, but the trend was going down. So we would call this a negative linear correlation. The green one here on the left would be a positive linear correlation. Looking again at the green and the red scatter plots, they are different because one is a positive linear correlation and the other one is a negative linear correlation. But if we look purely at the dots, which one do you think has a stronger linear correlation? In other one words, which trend appears to be more evident? It's hard to say, I think, if the, the green dots approximate a straight line better or if the red dots approximate a straight line better. We do have this sort of tight cluster here of these red dots but the green ones have this kind of perfectly spread out pattern along their positive line. When we do the analysis of correlation and regression as a hypothesis test, that's gonna be one of the questions we'll be able to answer. Which one has a stronger correlation? Obviously the yellow picture here, we said that there is no linear correlation and that's because the dots are so spread apart and don't 
approximate any sort of straight line. So this is a very le weak linear correlation or no correlation at all. Let's try creating a scatter plot ourselves. So here we have a set of paired data x and y, and we're going to plot each of these x and y values as an ordered pair on the graph here given. Remember the horizontal axis is x and the vertical axis is the y-axis. So this first line right here, this 1, 3, x is 1 and y is 3. So we're going to look at 1 on the x-axis and then go up to 3 on the y-axis and plot our first data point. Our second data point is 2, 5, so 2 on the x and 5 on the y. So we get our second data point there. Then we have 3, 5, so 3 on the x and 5 on the y. So here's another point. And we'll continue this process until we have all of our data points. Eventually, we'll learn how to use these data points to accurately find the equation for the line of best fit. But I'm going to go ahead and draw that regression line for us now. This is what the regression line might look like if we include this point, which I would consider this guy an outlier. He doesn't seem to be following the same pattern as the other points. You could maybe even argue that this was an outlier. But this is what the regression look like, what line would look like if we kept that outlier. Oftentimes what we'll find is that we prefer to strike that outlier from the data set, not include it. And if we do that, our regression line will look a little different. Let's focus on the regression line that does not include the outlier. If you look closely, you can see that the regression line does appear to contain uh, at least one of the data points. You might say it contains that one or even that one, but if you zoom in, that would be the only way you could tell. It is possible for the regression line to hit some of your data points. It's also possible for the regression line to not go through any of the data points. It doesn't have to contain any of them. One point that the regression line will always contain is what's known as the point of averages. So that is x bar comma y bar. So it is the average of the x's and the average of these y data values and your regression line will always go through that point. One thing we can measure with the data points in the regression line is how far away each data point is from the regression line. For example, this data point right here is below the regression line, whereas this data point up here is above the regression line. And these two are also above the regression line. Some data points are below and some data points are above. The distance each data point is from the regression line is called the residual. The stronger the correlation between x and y, the smaller these residual values will be. The weaker the correlation between x and y, the larger the residual values will be. If we are trying to prove a correlation exists between x and y, we hope that these residual values are as close to zero as possible.